What type of player still plays WoW in 2024? The elitist? The casual? The Plunderstorm Plunder Conqueror? Conqueror? Modern WoW keeps changing and the players with it, but some people don't like that. Are they wrong or right? Who is still playing WoW in 2024? You might be thinking it's you, but it really isn't. At least not you specifically. On our YouTube channel at least, we know we have a lot of people that watch our content despite not actually playing WoW anymore. We know because you guys told us. First of all, that's a really cool thing for us. Our content is good enough where people that don't play still watch it. It's pretty dope. Very humbling also. And we appreciate you guys. But that also says something else. As much as we would like to think our content is the golden geese's egg, most likely is the fact that those people not playing but watching our content want the game to give them a reason to play in 2024. So if those guys aren't playing, then who is? Again, who is playing in 2024? And because 2024 is yet another year that houses cognitive dissonance, biases and echo chambers, I will mention this now for the person watching 3 seconds of the video after reading the title and thinking they have the topic figured out already. I understand that there are all kinds of people playing the game and there isn't one label to encompass all of them. It's hard to talk about anything if we don't establish a premise, so let's do that now. Likely the most vocal and active player base, based on our experience, is comprised of the people in our guild, the people we pug with, the people we craft stuff for, the people in our streams we raid with and do dungeons, and the people we see do wall content online which if we extrapolate can apply to more guilds, maybe most guilds, other pugs, maybe most pugs, and so on. Maybe. I would be surprised to find out we are totally off, even if we miss a segment of the community. With that being said, and if you think otherwise, let us know in the comments, let me tell you about the WoW player in 2024. To talk about the modern WoW player, we have to talk about modern WoW. WoW right now is like a recovering patient after a long disease. You may or may not be aware of what happened in Shadowlands, but Shadowlands was just the moment where WoW was taken to the emergency room for surgery. Now we are in the casts, bandages and stitches part of the game's healing. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it for a second. Dragonfly did the biggest thing since probably Legion. It revamped all of the specs and added a new class. You might not think that's what happened, but from a multitude of points of view, you would be wrong and here's why. The talent system being revamped meant that, sure, some specs kind of still play or do the same stuff as before, but even those do it better, more polished and with less friction. Specs like Frost Decay struggled with expanding its identity from Breath of Syndragosa dual wheel playstyle to a two-hander obliteration gameplay now that we have and a combination of both in Season 4 that's just around the corner. This was not even on the horizon pre-Dragonflight, even though they tried to make it a thing in Shadowlands. And this is just the worst example. If one of the least reworked specs could have all of the playstyles people liked about it viable, then we can only go up from here. Talent combinations we never had before became a possibility. And if not, then actual reworks happened to a bunch of specs that added some of the player base's most favorite gameplay mechanics into them, like old legendary and tier set effects. These changes for the game were unthinkable in Shadowlands and earlier, yet we had them. It's still not perfect though. There's much more work that needs to be done for WoW to be better and bring back old players into the fray, let alone new blood. And now we come down to who is actually playing the game and I think the best example for this was Plunderstorm. The actual event came as a surprise for everyone and I think it was both good and bad at the same time, but mostly good. Let me be fair to the player that doesn't like Plunderstorm. It's not WoW. I get it. It isn't WoW. It's something else. Is it something WoW needs? Not sure, to be fair, but the problem with Plunderstorm mostly is the problem we had with Diablo Immortal. You guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that all have phones. Phone, right? It's not what the players asked or wanted, but that alone wouldn't be the problem if it didn't just come at a time when people wanted more WoW content. 
If Season 4 came in with a new raid and dungeons, most likely the backlash against Plunderstorm wouldn't have been as large. People will always complain though, so that's never going to go away. This is mostly concerning our topic of discussion, so won't go too deep, but the reason Plunderstorm is relevant is because it exposes the modern WoW player in 2024, the one that is outraged that we got this and not a new raid or new dungeons. But why and how? Well, first of all, we need to talk about why Plunderstorm is good, which is mostly for the same reasons augmentation is good. The game needs to have the devs be willing to try new things, try to risk certain designs to create cool new stuff for WoW. WoW cannot stay the same old 8 dungeons, 8 new raid bosses, same gear every 5 months. It won't get better and more and more people will get bored. Augmentation, although it messes with the meta, composition and community reception, is a new take on a role someone has in a group. It could be polished a lot more. Maybe move to a healing spec and not a DPS spec or I don't know, maybe both. Who knows? There are plenty of ways the support concept can be taken into the future. And as with Plunderstorm, I am fully aware that it's not in an ideal state and the friction it creates sucks to have to play through, but it is needed. First of all, there being friction kind of forces the devs hands to take more immediate action, whether it is with class balance or redesigning the support spec. As a consequence, lo and behold, we now have some of the tightest spec balance we have ever seen in the game with the one or two odd exceptions. It's no secret that the current version of WoW does not only not pull back old players, but definitely not new ones either, and mostly because it's increasing convoluted design systems like gearing, having so many layers to it. And this is a good example that defines the modern WoW player and to avoid pointing the finger at you, I will instead point it at me. I actually like the gearing system, in terms of its functionality. I like that the gear I loot scales with the difficulty of the content I do, and if I play something that's under geared and loot a piece of gear that's weaker, I can at least upgrade it to an either competitive eye level with the content I like to climb to, or at least capable of letting me do said content that gives me better gear. I like that as a mythic raider and someone doing keys over 20, I can loot the best gear in the game and have it be better than somebody's who doesn't do content as high as I am. It makes me feel like I'm getting rewarded for pushing myself as a player. I also don't actually like the fact that there are so many variations of it and this maybe pushes my point of view from the average WoW players. I actually think it's pretty silly to have Explorer, Adventurer, Veteran, Champion, Hero, Awakened in Season 4 and Myth Track and then Flight Stones, Whelp Crest, Straight Crest, Worm Crest and Aspect Crest that are all working to upgrade gear but not all gear and not with all of the material. It's a lot of words and a lot of individual items that need to accomplish something simple, something that needs to solve a problem that the game creates on its own with its multiple layers of difficulty content. That's a topic for another time. All of these issues, for instance, could be solved if the currency still drops relative to the difficulty of the content and I can use it to make an explorer item and turn it all the way into a myth item eventually with enough mythic bosses killed or enough plus 20s done in time. But the fact that my progression gets stunted a bunch of times along the way creates a more convoluted process that will make new players say, wait, what the fuck do I need to do again? And we can take this to other aspects of the game and eventually summarize a new player or returning player's perspective on Modern WoW. So the players still left playing the game are players who are fine with this system. Now, does that mean that they're wrong? I don't know. Is WoW a better game with fewer players but more loyal and fine with overly complicated system that they understand because they just haven't quit the game? WoW became popular when it was a more simple game, and it still is becoming popular when it's getting simplified. Look at how many more people play 10.2 now that even the gearing system is a little less annoying, dungeons are more accessible, tier sets are less of a pain to grind, classes are getting reworked and some are simpler to play. <coughs> and we come back to Plunderstorm. Plunderstorm takes WoW and removes all of the barriers of entry for new and old players. No need to read guides on gearing and spec design. No need to grind weeks on end for gear that likely gets obsolete before you completely dress up your tune 
and so on. Sure, it's not actual WoW, and that is something for the devs to take into consideration, but it does paint a picture of what WoW needs and why the modern WoW player's opinion sometimes feels it's disconnected from the game. Don't get me wrong, for years we have also been on the game too simple, need more hard camp until we slowly saw what it was turning into. Now, talking about how the game should be isn't the focus of the video, but realizing that we tend to live in echo chambers composed of people sharing our opinion because those who don't are just not playing WoW is important. It's also how the concept of echo chambers is defined. And I don't think the game should be easy or that the WoW player in 2024 is necessarily wrong, but the player is definitely loud and we hear this on YouTube videos, streams and forums and right now as you're watching this video, maybe I'm wrong. Not every voice carries the same intellectual value, however, and we do have wonderful community gems that showcases the lack of implementation of think before you act, or in this case, type a nerd rage virgin juice infused post on the forums. Maybe the modern wall player isn't wrong, but the game has to be something more than just log in, do your keys, farm your one mount or legendary, guild raid, do the weekly event, log out, rinse and repeat every single week for six months. The game needs and will change and for that we need more different kinds of players. Players that will come back once new shit gets put into the game. Maybe not battle royales, although <laughs> cannot wait to trio queue with Marcellian and the gang, but stuff that devs can take a chance on and not get roasted by entitled hamster wheel carrot chasing wonderful snowflakes that forgot what it meant to just have fun for fun's sakes. It doesn't always have to be about the quantifiable reward at the end of the road. WoW doesn't just have to be about how much eye level did you get this week or how high has your IO score climbed since last tyrannical reset. WoW can just be about fun and classic players prove this. Not so sure about the seasons of discovery monkeys that ask players for parses and logs, feels like those are just extreme version of retail players that got tired to kill Frog for the legendary. But there was a reason why WoW was popular when fun was the end goal and not just number grinding. Maybe it's not great that you have to play Plunderstorm, a game mode you don't like, to get a MOG in the actual game. Or maybe if you like Plunderstorm, it's nice to get a reward you can use in game after the event goes away. Or just maybe WoW is changing and closing our eyes to the change isn't the way forward to have a more fun experience because at the end of the day, it's just a fucking video game. So let's just have fun and play. But what to play now with Season 4 on the horizon? How about 100% unbiased, unaltered, documented meta spec that will never change its place on a tier list predicted accurately by your boys here at Marcellian Online? 